Welcome to Silverlight 4 What's New. My name is Bill Loden, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you the Viewbox control in Silverlight 4. In this first demo, I'm going to start with a empty Silverlight application. So right after File, New Project, uh, I've got this empty screen. And I'm going to add a text block. And I'm going to set the text property to some text. And then we'll just go ahead and run it right out of the box. And as you could probably guess, I have an empty page. The Silverlight control takes up the entire screen, and way up in the corner I have this tiny little text. Now I could change the text, uh, but uh, I could change the text size, but maybe we'll see what would happen if we just drop this inside of a view box. So we'll create a view box control, and we'll put the text inside of it and see what happens. Now since the view box takes up the entire grid, which takes up the entire user control, which takes up the entire web page, I get you know left to right a full scale Hello Silverlight 4 and it resizes as I change the browser height and width. Right? So Sort of that's your quick like hello world version of Viewbox, but I think we can do some, some things that are more interesting. Because Viewbox supports a number of properties. So for instance, one of those properties is stretch, and that determines how the Viewbox will uh, resize its, uh, its, its content. So what I've got here is another Silverlight application. And so let's just set it to a pretty standard size. I've got this canvas, and so the canvas is contained within the view box. And I want to point out that uh, we've got a, a background, but down at the bottom, there's a green line indicating the bottom. That way we can kind of figure out whether we see that or not, uh, knowing what we see and what we don't see in terms of the canvas. So what this application does is basically just allow me to start some animations on the screen. So we've got these little shapes bouncing around, and you can see that they're confined by the left and the right bounds of the canvas. And we can see that they're also confined by the bottom edge. So they'll bounce off. Now, the interesting thing about this is these little shapes are laid out on, on a canvas. So they're using absolute positioning within that canvas. So from left to right, I think the canvas is set to a width of 1680. And so I can position these in the XY coordinates uh, relative to that canvas. But the great thing about the fact that this is in a view box is that I can change the size and everything changes along with it. So my canvas gets very tiny and it just scales. Now the default stretch property is going to be set to uniform. And that means that I always get the same aspect ratio and I'm going to see the entire uh, contents. Uh, so if I, let's add some more things to look at. If I make the browser, and therefore the Silverlight user control, nice and skinny, well, I'm going to get the, the equivalent of the letterboxing because I'm going to get space on the top and the bottom uh, because I want to be able to show the full width. Correspondingly, if I make it nice and wide but not very tall, then I'm going to get the bars on the left or the right. So you can think of this as you know very similar to you know what televisions do when they're dealing with different aspect ratios. They'll they'll add content or blank space to the top or uh, and, and bottom or to the left and the right so that you can see the full screen. Notice that no matter what I do, I'm always going to see the entire canvas. I can always see that green line down at the bottom no matter what happens. Of course, that's just the default stretch property of uniform. I can also set it to none, which as you would expect, would do nothing in the way of stretching. So now it's using actual, you know, pixel resolution, but I don't see the entire canvas, right? So uh, the, that doesn't help me here. I can also do fill. Now what fill does is it will fill to the left uh, and to the left and right, and it'll fill top to bottom, and it will adjust the relative scale as necessary. So when I'm close to the original aspect ratio that's, that's required or, or, or requested by 
the view box content, in this case, the canvas, then I'm going to see these, these shapes as being close to round. But let's say I make the, the window nice and skinny. Well, I'm going to see the entire canvas. It's just going to stretch or sh shrink it down uh, in whichever, um, uh, whichever aspect ratio is necessary. So for instance, I can get you know, the entire canvas squeezed in here, but everything has to be nice and skinny, or everything in this respect would be nice and wide. All right, so it's pretty flexible in terms of what you can do with Viewbox. One more thing, uh, one more stretch property is Uniform to Fill. And what Uniform to Fill does is it allows me to keep the correct aspect ratio of the canvas. So you'll notice that no matter what happens, my shapes are always going to be perfect circles. But if I make it the, the user control skinny, well, I'm going to get it stretched top to bottom, but I'm going to lose um, lose space or lose visibility to the left to right. And if I go the other direction, I'm going to get the full left to right, but I'm going to lose what's on the bottom. So these are different options of the stretch property of Viewbox. So one more demonstration, and that is uh, one that would maybe provide a practical example of, of where the Viewbox might come in handy in a Silverlight application. So what I've got here is this little recipe application. And this recipe application is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It's got uh, a nice background and I can uh, sort of change the size and all the instructions for the recipe. They stay, um, they expand to fit. So that's all well and good. <clears throat> the problem is this title up at the top. As I go through different recipes, you'll notice that the longer recipe names are being cut off, right? Now, we don't really want to change the whole layout. I mean, we could, we could word wrap up here, but then that would push uh, the other content down potentially. And so this might be a, a more practical example of where the view box could come in handy. Because all I have to do is go into the XAML and find that title and we'll just drop it in a view box. And I'm also going to set the horizontal alignment because it's in a, in a grid cell. It's going to, by default, stay in the center. And I'd prefer to make it uh, just line up along the bottom. And then we'll take that text block and drop it inside the view box. And just by adding that view box, I'll get a functionality that is a little bit maybe nicer for the end user experience. So now I've got my title and it looks just fine. But as I go through different recipes, the title resizes in order to fit, right? And so that way I've got the same consistent space from top to bottom. That's not going to be expanding and contracting, which can sometimes be a little odd. But if I need to resize, I'll always be able to see the entire title of the recipe, right? So a simple example, and yet maybe a more practical example of where the view box can help you out. Now, if you're interested in downloading a copy of the source code that you saw today, please be sure and visit my blog. And as always, thank you very, very much.